All right, I want to talk about CSS font stacks. So what exactly a font stack is and how you can build your own font stacks. In CSS, the font family property controls which font face is used on content inside your web pages. So the three most common families or classes of web fonts are sans serif, serif, and monospace. So monospace, as the name would imply, every character inside of a monospace font face takes up the same amount of width. This is typically what gets used for code. If you're putting some code on the screen, then you will be putting a monospace font. Serif, you get the serifs, which are the little curly bits at the end here. See the little bits sticking off on the left and right at the bottom of the P, up at the top here. All those little things are called serifs. And then sans serif doesn't have those. So here's a sans serif, serif, and monospace font. Now the names that I put here for sans serif, serif, and monospace, these names are the default generic names. We can add our own selected names of fonts. So if you know the names of the fonts, as an example here for sans serif, I'm going to add two other names in front of here. Like this. So there's comma separated list of font names. Arial, Helvetica, and then sans serif. And what's going to happen is the browser will try to implement these fonts in this order. So Arial would get, would get used first. If that's not available, then Helvetica. If Helvetica is not found on the computer either, sans serif. It'll just tell the operating system, okay, go find a sans serif font for me, and it will use that. So these generic names are the fallback. And altogether, this is a font stack. For serif, there's a few different ones. Um, we could try Georgia, comma, Palatino, it's Palatino, there we go, and serif. So if I save this and I come over here, watch this middle paragraph. This one is set to the uh, serif font. Right now it's doing whatever the default serif is for the browser. When I refresh this, there. Now we're having a different font applied. So it looked for Georgia applied that. If it hadn't found it, Palatino would have been the font that was applied. Now it all depends on which fonts the person has installed on their operating system. They may have on their operating system a whole bunch of applications. Maybe they've got Microsoft Office, maybe they've got uh, Photoshop, maybe they've got uh, the entire Adobe Creative Suite. If they have all these other programs, then other fonts are going to be installed on your computer. Then you can see them with this. However, just because I, as the designer of this page, have these fonts doesn't mean that you, as the person who's visiting my website, has those fonts installed as well. And that's why we build these font stacks. So I'm going to add one here, courier new, courier, and then monospace. Whenever there's a space in a name, this is important to note, you need to put quotation marks, can be single or double, around the font name to include that space. There we go. So now I've got Courier New applied on here. Okay, there are, um, I've got a few fonts listed here. Uh, you can use those as reference as to whether or not they're serve or sans serve. But uh, for me, there's a site point article on some great font stacks that you can use. And I have copied those in here. I'll put a link to the actual article itself in the comments. But what I've done is I've added to this file and I will add the code just for this file to the comments as well. Here is a font stack and it's made up of more than just three. It's a list of all the potential fonts that are based off of Times New Roman ending with serif. Now you don't have to just use fonts, like one for Windows, one for OS X, one for Linux, and then a fallback one. You can have as many as you want, trying to get just the perfect font. So the one that you really want, you have that at the front of the stack. And then as it goes down, these are ones that are less favorite, or 
uh, less desired by the de designer of the page. But you can create this big long list. At this front, right here, at the stack, this is where you would put your web fonts. So if there is a font that you are loading through the CSS to be used on the page, that would come first. Then you would have the fallback fonts. So the web font is first. Let's say I had something called uh, Come for Lunch. I don't believe that's an actual font name, but let's just say that I had a font called Come for Lunch. Refresh, nothing changed here because I don't have a font called this installed on my computer. If that wasn't found, then it would default back to Arial Helvetica. These are the fallback fonts. This is a unique font that I've supposedly loaded on the page. This is the one that I really want to use. These are ones that have a similar size. So you want to have something that has the similar X height. If you look at lowercase letters, the O, the R, the E, the M, they're all the same height. This is the X height. Some, like a letter P, has something that drops down below it. Letter L's got something that sticks up above, but in between that middle range, that's the X height. And you want to try to get fonts that are the same class, sans serif, serif, monospace, but you also want to try and find ones that match as closely as possible to the X height so the page doesn't change dramatically as you switch from one font to the next. All the fonts in your stack should be things that are similar. They should be things that are visually similar. They have the same um, impression. They leave the same feeling with the user. Different fonts have different meaning, and I'm going to make another video on that uh, in the future, as well as on how to import fonts and how to use Google fonts and all those kinds of things. But for now, this is just about font stacks and understanding how you build a font stack, what a font stack is, and why it's important to have a font stack, because not everybody has the same fonts installed. All right, hope that makes sense to you. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. And as always, thanks for watching.